Father, we glorify your name. We give you praise. We exalt you. We honor you. We adore you. Only you can do what no man can do. And that is exactly what you do in our lives. No man can redeem us. No man can purify us. No man can sanctify us. No man can satisfy us. You alone do what no man can do. And that is exactly what you do in our lives. Father, we say yes to your workings in our hearts. We say yes to your workings in our soul. We say yes to your working in our mind, in our spirit. We say yes to you, Lord. And we ask for more. That you intensify your work in us. Intensify your work in our heart. Lord, intensify your work in our heart. Intensify your work in our heart. We allow you, Lord. We allow you, Lord. Because only as you walk in us, can we walk with you. And Jesus, we really want to walk with you. We ask, dear Lord, that you will intensify your work in our lives. Baptize us with your spirit. Walk in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Point our hearts. Sanctify us. Be gracious to us. Send your word to us this evening. Bless us. Bless us, Father. We ask that you bless us tonight. Bless us, dear Lord. Bless us, Father. Bless us. Help us. Until we become like you. Don't stop, O oh God. Until we have come into your likeness. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. We love you. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Let's move forward. Praise Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Good evening, welcome to church. We thank God for the privilege to be in His presence this evening. It's good to have everyone in church. And we thank God for that great privilege to be before Him, to receive the counsel of the Spirit. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So we have been looking at how that if the believer will come into the life of glory that the Lord has destined for him, praise Jesus, he has to do away with the self-life. The believer is not permitted to love himself. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. Amen. Self-love is a principle against, are you following me? The principle of the kingdom. Are you with me? The Lord calls us to deny ourselves. Are you with me? Because if you love yourself, you can't walk with Jesus. So we have been looking at how that we must surrender our will. We must, we must lay aside our will and submit to the will of the Lord so we can come into glory. Praise Jesus. Because you see, you can't come into glory if you don't destroy Satan. As I've been talking to you. Are you with me? You can't come into what? Into glory in any area of your life. You can't come into glory if you don't what? Destroy Satan. Shout hallelujah. But you can't destroy Satan if you don't embrace the will of God. It is as you embrace the will of God, are you following me, that you destroy Satan. Amen. Because embracing the will of God means the rejection of your own will. And I've been showing you that as, as a man, praise Jesus, you have a will that is distinct and different and almost always contrary to the will of God. 
Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. Now, to embrace death is to deliberately reject your will. Amen. Is to relinquish your will so that you can pick up the will of God. Shout hallelujah. And in doing so, amen, even though many times, all of the times it is painful, shout hallelujah, because that is getting your ill burst. Amen. It is painful embracing the will of God. You see, sometimes someone offends you and you are a child of God. You are a Christian. Real one, real Christian. Be like, ah, if not for Jesus. Ah, you understand? It's, the person has really offended. The person has hurt you. And you know you can deal with the person. You say, ah, you want to deal with it. You, you wish. Or you are powerless to do so. Why? Because there's a will that is higher than your will. That the Lord will not allow me. Are you following me? You see, there are many things you would want to do. Are you following me? That is contrary to the will of God. Are you with me? And there are many things God will want you to do that, is, that are contrary to your will. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the life of victory, the life that will come into glory rejects itself, rejects its own will, its desire, its pleasure, its feelings, so that it can what? Embrace the will of God. Praise Jesus. You see, and I'm going to show you last week that you see your environment, your surroundings, are you with me? Is designed to help you escape the will of God. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Everything around you is designed to help you what? Escape the will of God. Praise Jesus. Are you with me now? Everything around you is what? Designed to help you escape the will of God. So that you not do the will of God. So that you can love yourself and do your own will. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? The society, the environment is designed to help you love yourself and choose your own will above the will of God. Are you with me? Praise Jesus. Because Satan is the God of this world. Are you with me? But you don't, you don't have to live by the design. Are you following me? You can live from a different life, from the life within. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. The design is so subtle and so powerful. Are you following me? Are you with me? That if you don't want to do the will of God, there is an easy escape. And it will not appear to many people that you are not doing the will of God. Because you still be speaking in tongues and doing so many religious activities. Are you following me? You see, but the only reason why the design, are you following me? The only reason why the things around you that have been designed to help you escape the will of God, the only reason why they will walk, are you following me? The only reason why they will eventually lure you away from the path of divine will is that you love yourself. Are you with me? Is that what? The only reason why the orchestration of Satan, why the design around you to make sure you don't do God's will, the only reason why it will walk, can you hear me? The only reason why to prosper, are you following me, is that you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, the will, are you following me? If you don't love yourself, are you with me? No orchestration around you, targeted at you, rejecting God's will, will work. Praise Jesus. And we began to see the life of Jesus on the book of Matthew chapter 16. From verse 21. That was where we stopped last week. We stopped at verse 23. We'll pick it up. Let's go straight to verse 21. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. You see, many times people want to pity you. Are you with me? So let's read Matthew. From that time forth began Jesus to shield unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So Jesus began to speak to the disciples about the path 
that had been ordained for him by God. Are you following me? About what? The path that has been ordained for him by God. You see, there's a path that has been ordained for us by God. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Apart from the general scope of our of Christian living, are you following me? How we must behave? There's a general principle, principal and foundational rule of Christian behavior, Christian living. Are you following me? But there are also specific pathways that God has made for each believer to walk. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? You see, in, in principle, every believer must go through what Jesus went through. In principle. But in practice, we don't necessarily have to die on the cross. We don't necessarily have to go to, have to, go to the cross. Can you hear me? But in principle, what may not be in principle, the principle of what he did, which is the principle of surrender to the will of God. Are you following me? Are we still together? Are we together? I'm not going to Jerusalem and suffer many of the others and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised in today. You see, in practice, we don't necessarily have to go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, be killed and be raised again. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, this was the peculiar pathway ordained for Jesus. But it's the same principle of surrender to the will of God, which I've been telling you is the pathway to glory. Can you hear me now? In principle, we must all choose the will of God. Are we together now? Shout hallelujah. In principle, we must all what? We must all choose the will of God. Now, the principle is a general principle for every believer. For every child of God that wants to come into glory. Are you following me? It is the principle of surrender to divine will. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. And the greatest enemy of surrender to divine will is what? Is what? Can you talk to me? No, it's not self. Can you say myself? It's yourself. <laughs> Are you with me? Praise Jesus. The greatest enemy, are you with me? To a life of surrender to divine will is yourself, is myself, is self. It's the self life. Everybody just wants to be who they are. They don't want anybody to touch them. They don't want anybody to offend them. Just, this is who I am. Let me just remain who I am. You see, when you remain who you are in that sense, you will not be what God wants you to be in every sense of it. Even in the natural. Are you with me? Child, hallelujah. So, we have been taught to the life of self-preservation, which is actually anti the will of God, which is against divine will. Are you following me? It is against the principle of surrender. Are you following me? Invariably, it is against the principle of glorification. Shout hallelujah. So, the practice here for Jesus was that he suffered many things of the others and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. But what's the principle here? The principle of surrender. Are you following me? So, if yourself, the self-life, are you following me? The self-will, self-play yourself, are you following me? If it's the greatest enemy of my glory, <laughs> you see, <laughs> shout hallelujah, amen. You see, you think the greatest enemy of your glory or the enemy of your glory, you think is in the village. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah, amen. You think the enemy of your glory is where? Is in the village. <laughs> shout hallelujah. Okay, some of you think it's the devil. Some of you think it's in the village. Mama Rufia. You think it's that palong that she has locked and thrown the key away? Are you following me? You see, if your glory is those kind of glory, just forget about it. It's useless. Any 
glory like I'm a padlock. <laughs> Are you with me? Any glory they can padlock. Don't go and just go and, go and just go and do business. Don't look for that glory. You will still make it in life. Any glory they can any glory they can padlock. Or any glory they can tie on tree. Glory, you tie it on tree. Are you following me? So some of you, so many Christians think that there's an enemy in the village or somewhere in the city that has nailed their glory to a tree. Is that not true? Is that not what so many people think? And is that not the prayer points? Your glory tied to a tree, God should collect it for you. <laughs> Are we together? Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, because we don't know what glory is, are you following my friends? So we think the enemy of our glory are human beings used by Satan or Satan himself as it were. Are you following me? So we are waging a lot of war as it were to get those glory back. Are you with me now my friends? But you see that is not glory. Are you with me? Are you with me? Those, are, those things you call glory, that they call glory, that you now have to pray, pray, pray for to release your glory, they are things that unbeliever can get without doing juju. Are you following me? Applying the right principle of hard work, uh, consistency, and a lot of stuff. Are you with me now, my friends? Do you understand me, my friends? All those things will work out. Hmm? Pray Jesus forever more. If, if you can now pray more to remove your enemies from the way. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. You see, your real glory is with who? Tell me, where's your glory? Where's your glory? Hmm? Your glory is in you. Praise Jesus. Where's your glory? God is your glory. So God is our glory. Our glory is with God. Are you with me now, my friends? Jesus Christ was praying, he said. Bring me into the glory that I had with you before the world began. So we have a glory with God. Are you following me? The glory of man or the glory of the Christian man, of every man, well, I'm talking about the Christian man. The glory of the Christian man is with who? Is with God. Are you hearing me now? Now, the way to that glory, to get that glory, are you following me? See, are you following me? The way to lay hold on that glory is surrender. Are you hearing me now, my friends? Is rejecting the life of the flesh, of self. Are you following me? Is surrender. Are you with me now, my friends? But there's something about you and something in you that, don't, that does not love that life of surrender. That thing is yourself. So now, what is the enemy of your glory? Tell me, what is the enemy of your glory? It's yourself. Self-life. That wants to just be comfortable. It doesn't want to be touched. Are you with me? So you see, if what we are really praying for is the real glory, which is with God, the glory of God. Are you following me? And we are praying that the enemies that are holding our glory should die. In all of us, will have died. <laughs> are you with me? Are you with me now, my friends? Because you are the enemy of your own glory. You see, when you get yourself out of the way, are you with me? Glory can happen to you. Can you hear me now, my friends? When you what? When you get yourself out of the way, glory will happen to you. I mean glory in every sense of it. In your natural life, whatever expression. Are you following me? Because when glory happens to us, it also finds expression in our natural life. Are you with me now, my friends? But the enemy of glory is yourself. Are you following me? Amen. It's not first of all Satan. Are you following me? Because you see, the way you even empower Satan, the way you preserve Satan is to preserve yourself. Once you get yourself out of the way, Satan's head is crushed and you can step into glory. Are you following me? So, the principle for stepping into glory, are you with me now, my friends? 
is the principle of surrender. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So, in practice, God lays different demands on each of us. Are you following me now, my friends? Are you following me? So, there's a specific pathway that God has ordained for you to walk in this world. Are you with me? There's a what? There's a specific pathway that God has ordained for you to walk in this world. That is why you must be careful not to run another man's race. Hmm? You must stay on your own lane in the journey of life. Can you hear me, my friends? You must do what? You must stay on your own lane in the journey of life. Because you see, when you begin to run and enter another man's lane, you're already disqualified from the race. You know, you might still appear to be running. Are you with me? Now, many times you want to move away from your lane which is the specific pathway that has been ordained for you in your walk with God, in your walk with Jesus. Are you following me? The specific pathway ordained for you in this world. Many times you want to move away, are you following me? Because it is not convenient for yourself. Are you with me? Because it is not what? It is not convenient for yourself. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now, the temptation to move away. Hear me? Are you following my friends? Can you hear me? Because I'm taking you on a journey. We are going higher this evening. The temptation to move away from the pathway ordained for you by God. From the, are you with me? From the race that God has set before you. Hmm? Are you with me? The temptation to move away is solely because that pathway is not convenient for you. Are you with me? It's not what? It's not convenient for you. Now, look at the pathway. Don't forget the principle. It's the same principle. Principle of what? Surrender to the will of God. Rejection of ourselves, of our own will. Are you following me? But we have different pathways and you so appreciate it. Now, look at the pathway that was set before Jesus. Are you with me? How that he must go unto Jerusalem uh and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes. People that should know better. Are you with me? People that should support him in what he has come to do in this world. Are you following me? People that should support him in the ministry. People that should say we are behind you. The elders, the chief priests and the scribes. Supposedly, you need to appreciate this. This is so serious. This is so serious. People that should naturally, are you following me, be conversing for Jesus. Are you following me? That the Messiah is here. Everybody come and follow him. Are you following me? He said, but there was a pathway created for him. You see, if you love acceptance, are you with me? If you love acceptance that everybody should accept you, you cannot fulfill purpose. <laughs> are you with me? You cannot what? I'm telling you the truth. You cannot what? Fulfill purpose. You can't fulfill purpose. If you stay in the path that God has set for you, those that should accept you will accept you. Are you following me? Are you with me? Those that God has ordained to what? To accept you, we accept you. You see, because in life, are you, are you with me? To fulfill purpose, actually, we need to be accepted. Are you with me? If Paul was not accepted by the apostles, are you for, by, by the Jerusalem apostles, he would not fulfill his, his, his work. Are you with me? He was accepted. At the time, you had to be taken there by Barnabas. Oh, this is so beautiful. Don't let me go there. When I, when I read that story, are you following me? I'm still going to go back. It's so powerful. Barnabas at the time was one that introduced Paul to the believers. Are you following me? Are you following me? After a while, Paul himself had to go to meet the apostles. 
Because there is a validation. Are you following me? See, there is the validation of God and there is the validation of the men that God has ordained for you. Hmm? You don't need the validation, the acceptance of all men. They are men that God has ordained for you in your journey. Are you following me? Your validation, your oil is with them. Are you following me? If a Jesus will fulfill his purpose, they always ask to be a John the Baptist. Are you following me? That will say, behold the Lamb of God. John the Baptist has to say to the people, are you following me? Behold the Lamb of God. A Moses has to lay his hands on Joshua. Are you following me? Elijah has to point himself on Elijah. Are you following me? Paul had to make Timothy sure that he was a man of God. Pastor Timothy. Oh man of God. Thou man of God. Are you following me? He had to make him, make, he had to make him sure. Because there are many voices that would put pressure on you and your calling. When I say your calling, I don't just mean the call to do to be a pastor. I mean the call to be what God has called you to be. Are you following me? Are you following me? This is an apostolic church. Can you hear me? Are you hearing me? You must have the sense of being sent. You must have the sense of being called. Are you hearing me, my friends? So, there are many voices that will want to invalidate. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That will want to invalidate your calling, what God has called you to be. So, you need a voice. Are you following me? Are you following me, my friends? You need a voice that will say to you, you are a man of God. You are Pastor Timothy. Are you following me? You see, but if you love acceptance, you are in trouble and going somewhere. Because many times, the voices that will speak against you are always more than the voices that will speak for you. Hear me? But in heaven, in the realms of the spirit, are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Destiny does not happen by how many voices are speaking for you. Are you following me? Or how many voices are speaking against you? Destiny happens because the right voices are speaking into your life. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So, there were many sons of the prophet, are you following me, that were waiting to laugh and scorn Elisha. But one voice was speaking over him, the voice of Elijah. Are you with me? The voice of Elijah was enough to bring Elisha into his destiny. Notwithstanding what the sons, the many sons of the prophets were talking about. Are you following me? But if you love validation, if you love acceptance, you will be used to numbers. Oh, friends, can you hear me? How many people, how many people are, are, are liking me? How many people are, are, are accepting me? Are you with me now, my friends? You'll be used to how many people love me. <laughs> it's only focusing on that one person that God has called to love you. You see, when God calls people to love you, are you following me? And bring into into your destiny, they love you regardless. Are you with me? They love you regardless. What did I say? They love you regardless. They love you with your mess. They love you with your death. Because that's why they are there to clean you up so that you become who God says you should become. Are you with me, my friends? But many times we are looking for the numbers, we are looking for many voices. How many people love me? No, 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 no. You don't need many people to love you. Are you following me? You need that person, even if it's one that God has ordained for your life. Are you following me? You see, why am I saying this? Look at how he must suffer many things of the elders and chief priests as Christ. You need to appreciate who the elders and chief priests as Christ were. Are you following me? Are you following me? These were the teachers of religious law. These were the men that came after the law of Moses. Like, are you following me? They were the ones like upholding the law of God. <laughs> hey, are you following me? They were the ones looking like, are you following me? Hey, friends, are you with me? They were looking like, like those that should actually naturally prepare a way for Jesus. <laughs> are you with me? Are you with me now, my friends? They were the spiritual folks. So Jesus now came. Are you with me? The people that should embrace him. Hmm? Naturally. By human logic. You understand. 
By what? Human logic. <laughs> the people that should embrace him, they rejected. They said he will suffer many things of them. See, many of you calculate too much. That hey, this person, this is my uncle, this is my brother. Are you following me? It's human logic. Are you following me? If the elders and chief priests and scribes reject Jesus, are you following me? Peter would accept him. John would accept him. James would accept him. Andrew would accept him. They will follow him with all their lives. Are you with me? You see, why you don't find the people that God has ordained for you in life? Are you following me? To help you in your journey and bring it, bring it to your destiny. Because you focus too much on those that don't accept you. Are you following me? So Jesus here, yeah, he said he's go- he was going to suffer many things. That was the pathway ordained for him by God. Are you with me now, my friends? And be killed. Are you with me? And what? And be killed. And be raised again the third day. Talk to me. All these things, as I said, are they convenient? Are they convenient? Oh, don't think it was Jesus. I've, read, I've been showing that he came as a human being. And I'm showing you in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, if this cup could pass over me. Are you following me? These things were not convenient for Jesus. Are you following me? But this is the peculiarity of his journey. You see, you must appreciate the peculiarity of your journey. Hmm? Don't wish to be in another man's shoes. Are you with me now, my friends? You must appreciate what? The peculiarity of your journey. Don't move away from your lane. You want to move away from your lane because it is not convenient. Are you with me now, my friends? And because you love convenience, are you following me? You want to reject the will of God, the path ordained for you by God. Now, for Jesus, these things were not convenient. Are we together now? They were not what? Even though they are the pathway to glory, yet they were not what? Convenient. Can I talk to you, my friends? The path that God has ordained for you in this world is the only way to your glory. Are you following me? You do hear me? The path that God has ordained for you in this world is what? Is the only way to your glory. But even though it is the only way to your glory, it is never convenient. Are you following? It is never what? Convenient. And there's something about you that loves convenience. Are you with me? There is what? Something about you that loves convenience is yourself. You love yourself. You love convenience. You don't want anything to inconvenience you. Are you following me now, my friends? You don't want what? Anything to inconvenience you. Can I talk to you, my friend? And the will of God always comes to inconvenience us. Are you with me? The will of God always comes to what? Inconvenience us. If we, that is the reason. You are not here to be convenient. To be comfortable. The will of God always comes to attack your convenience. Because what to them at what? At ease in Zion. <laughs> Are you with me now, my friends? What to them at what? At ease in Zion. The will of God comes to attack your convenience. Because convenience is the life of self. It's the life of the flesh. Convenience, the life that of convenience, you love convenience, your own convenience, are you following me? It stops men from glory. Are you following me? When you choose a life of convenience, you what? You can't enter glory. So, a life of convenience, are you following me? Always hinders a man from walking in the path ordained for him by God. So, this was not convenient for Jesus. Are you following me? But he stayed in that path. Are you following me? Because he did not treasure his convenience. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? Jesus stayed here. Why? Because he did not treasure what? His convenience. He treasured the will of God above his convenience. Are you with me? Many believers only do things that are convenient for them or when it is convenient for them. Are you following me? You are far from a life of glory like that. 
Are you with me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. You are now wondering why glory is not happening in your life. It's because you love convenience. You do things that are convenient for you, and you do things when they are convenient for you. You are cautious from a life of glory. Are you with me? You now start praying up and down that God should help you look for your glory. Where is your glory? Are you with me now, my friends? So, for Jesus, see the path ordained for him was not a convenient path. Are you following me? You see, if you love convenience, I said the word is arranged to help you reject the will of God. Are you following me? And it won't look like you are rejecting the will of God. So just look, it should just be simply, just make yourself comfortable. How can you inconvenience yourself? Why? It should just be that people just want to love you. Are you with me? People just want to accept you. People that should not accept you. May you not be accepted by those that should not accept you. Hey, some people will accept you and you have left the part of God. <laughs> Are you with me now, my friends? So this part that Jesus was on was not a convenient one. Are you following me? Friends, can I talk to you? The path to glory will never be convenient. If anybody teaches you otherwise, the person has lied to you. Are you with me? The path to glory will what? And then you hear me say something different from this. Are you following me? I'm no longer following God. I've gone to Basland. Just leave the church. Go and find, the, go and find another good pastor. <clears throat> Are you with me? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. Amen. And this is what we'll say until we take this city. Are you with me? We are not going to turn to a bread and butter gospel. Are you with me now, my friends? I said the path to glory will what? We will never be convenient. Are you following me? Because the convenience, are you following me? Is you loving yourself? Are you with me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. And if you love yourself, if you love convenience, are you following me? The world is arranged to give you that convenience. To make it convenient. Are you following me? If you love yourself, if you love convenience, you will easily depart. Depart from the will of God. Because there are people arranged by Satan. Are you following me? I said by who? By Satan. To make it convenient. To make you choose convenience. Are you with me now, my friends? But don't forget, each time you choose convenience, are you following me? You are rejecting glory. <laughs> Do you understand me? Each time you choose what? Convenience. You are what? Rejecting glory. Because to choose convenience is to choose yourself first. Is to choose yourself above God. Is to choose yourself above the will of God. Is to say you are more important. Are you following me? This was not convenient for Jesus. Oh, you think it was convenient? Why was he praying in the garden? Why was he sorrowful? It's not convenient. My friends, what Jesus did was not convenient for him. Can you say it was it's not convenient? It wasn't convenient for him. And it's only does know our glory. We have to learn his principle. Even though we have different practices. Like there are different pathways set to us, set for us to walk. So he heard this. It wasn't convenient and he began to talk to his disciples about what he was to go through. So you tell people what God has called you to do, the path he has set you on. People see your life that how you are following God, how you are trying to do what God has called you to do. Then see what happens. Then Peter took him. Peter took him aside. Are you following me? Peter what? There's somebody that now wants to accept him. Someone that wants to love him. Someone that wants to show him mercy. Someone that wants to make him convenient. Then Peter took him and began to rebook him. <laughs> and began to what? Saying, be it far from the Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Do you understand? Does this not look like many people are telling you, ah, no, 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 God forbid. How can you do that? 
God can never ask you to do that. Are you following me? Does not look like when people are showing you pity, showing you mercy, but it is actually to lure you away from divine will. Let me explain to you. The epitaph took him aside, other translations, and even KJV, if you check those that have asterisk and all of that, all those, what do you still call it? Uh, I've forgotten the English or indentations or something. The epitaph took him aside and began to rebook him. Are you following me? Are you with me? Is it only you? Church, 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 church. Jesus, is, is it only you? You will fulfill purpose that will. But I can't find something to do. Is it only you? Use brain, no. Use brain. <coughs> this is Jesus, 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 Jesus that you are doing. Are you following me? Begin to rebook you. Just follow me carefully. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. Are you with me now, my friends? Let me give you. It's like you are working a ten thousand per month dollar job, or maybe even not up to that. Are you following me? God then calls you into ministry and says, "Go and start ministry in a remote village in Ondo State." Are you following? Me? Now leave that job, then go and start ministry. Remote village, start from scratch, leave the job. Are you following me, my friends? Someone now takes you aside. And say, eh, you told the person what God said. Are you, that is what God is leading me to do. Are you with me? You see, it's not about who is advising you. It's about who are you. Are you following me? Because are you following me? It's not only Satan that will be, are you with me? You think it's only bad people that will advise you against the will of God. Are you with me? The most spiritual person can be caught in a moment of blindness. Are you with me now, my friend? Can be what? It now depends on whether you love convenience or not. Are you with me now, my friends? I've been advised by spiritual people, are you following me, against what God has told me to do. Are you with me? No, I mean real Christians, spiritual people that are following the Lord themselves. Are you following me? Why were they advising me that way? They were pitying me, that young boy like you. Why do you want to choose? Are you following me? Are you with me? They don't mean to not let me do the will of God. Are you with me? They are just, they are just, uh, why don't you have, have good plans for your life? Why don't you just walk away? Are you, their plan is not for me to, because they themselves are doing the will of God. Are you with me? Remember the first time I and my wife, when they were still dating, my fiancé then, went to see one of our, our, maybe I'll call him mentors. Are you following me? I began to tell him the things that God is leading me to do, the things that were in my spirit. Some of his counselors were absolutely not in tandem with the will of God for me. But this person is a lover of God. Can you hear me? Why was he saying all those things? Because he loves me. <laughs> he was advising me. As someone who has gone far ahead and who has seen a lot. Are you with me? Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? He was advising me because he cares. How are you going to do it? And all of that. Are you with me? No, it's not about him. Hmm? It's not about who is giving you the advice. Are you with me? It's about you. What do you love? Do you love convenience or you love the will of God? Because you see, if you love convenience, are you following me? You easily depart from the will of God. Because I said the, this word is arranged. To help you reject us. Are you following me? Because even Peter, are you following me? Can you say even Peter? That's like the most spiritual person. Even Peter can tell you to reject God's will. Are you following me? Not because he wants to tell you to reject God's will, but because he wants you to consider yourself. Hey, I said what? He wants to, he wants you to what? Consider, can you say consider yourself? <laughs> You want to consider yourself. Hmm? You just want to just consider yourself. Consider your life. Consider what plans. Consider. Just consider yourself. Hey, are you what? Are you with me? But in this path to glory, we are not called to consider ourselves. We are called to consider Him. We are called to what? Consider Him. Consider the Lord. We are not called to consider ourselves. Are you with me? 
Because some of you think it is evil if the counsel is from an ungodly person. Are you following me? Are you following me? What makes it evil is not who it's coming from. Hmm? It's about what will be the effect, the resultant effect on the will of God for your life. On that path God has made for you. Are you following me? So see Peter here, yeah, took him up and began to rebuke him. So this one, God tells me to go and start a ministry in the village and all of that. Tells me to leave a good, good paint job. And, goes, and the person says, God forbid, God forbid, may we not see such, may such never happen to you. Are you with me? Those persons don't appear to love you. Those persons not, not appear to wish you well. That may such evil not happen to you in the name of Jesus. May such evil not happen to you. I even I perceive that Satan is only out to cheat you from this blessing that God has given you. I perceive strongly. There's no perception. <laughs> Are you following me? And you heard God clearly, you are sure. Are you following me? But now the person is considering you. The person now also wants you to consider yourself. The question will you actually consider yourself? Are you following me? Will you pity yourself? You see, people will pity you. Are you following me? When you want to embark on the journey that God has made for you, on the path to glory, are you following me? People will pity you. But don't forget, the aim of that pity is to lure you out of divine will. Are you following me, my friends? Are you with me? Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Don't forget what Jesus was talking about was something that was not convenient for Jesus. Eh? As a person, it's already not convenient for him. Someone now comes again to now say, may it be far from you. Are you following me? If Jesus loves convenience, he has seen an automatic passport to escape that thing. That wow, there's someone who cares so much about me. There's someone who doesn't want me to go through all of these things. Ah, thank you, Peter. I never saw, I never, thank you for this. I never saw this, I never saw it this way. You know, the way people can advise you and you think you have been blind all your life. You think you have been doing the wrong thing. You think you have been, what you have been, what God has told you to do that you have been doing. You think you have been doing it wrongly. Oh, thank you, Peter. I never, I never, I never saw this wisdom. So you mean I can still serve God even though I'm still doing all of this business, I'm still doing all this work. You mean I can still do it? I never, I never saw it though. You are a man of wisdom. It's a lie. You've considered yourself. Are you following me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Ah, uh, be your service is Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, you can still, you can get a good job. And you can strike a deal. Thursdays you work from home. You just work from home on Thursdays. Are you following me? But you know it's not part of the calling. Are you with me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Get a good job. Just let them know on Thursdays you want to work from home. Or you will close early. The service is just told. You can still, you can. Oh, you know the Lord told you something different. Are you following me? I say, oh, I never sweat like that though. Are you with me? You see? Why you are seeing it like that now? Because you are considering yourself. Are you following me? As long as you consider him, as long as you consider the Lord, you will never see it like that. Hmm? You will keep you will only see the way God sees it. Are you following me? You start seeing it like that. Are you following me? Because you have begun to consider yourself. Are you following me? The day is Adam and Eve. Are you following me? Are you following me? The day they started to consider themselves, they began to see the tree the way God did not want them to see it. Different from the way God sees it. Are you following me? It had been there all the while. Are you following me? They didn't see it like that. Are you following me? You see, there is a perspective to everything. And the perspective you see depends on whose side you are on. 
Are you on the side of God or on the side of your, of your own convenience? Are you following me? They've been seeing the tree, they've been seeing the fruit, but they've not seen it that way that Satan was pointing to them because they never considered themselves. And don't forget, all, all the vision, all the sight, all what Satan was saying about the tree, are you following me? Was targeted at themselves. It will make you wise. It will make you, it will make you, are you following me? It will make you, your eyes will be your, it will make you, are you following me? So the way they began to consider themselves, you, are you with me? They now saw the tree and the fruit in a different light from the light of God. Are you following me? You see, when you begin to consider yourself, what God has told you that you are sure of, you begin to sit in another light, in a kind of light of wisdom where you can still do something else with it. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? So this was a call from Peter. Who without doubt loved Jesus? Are you with me? Who without doubt did what? But this was a call, are you following me? From Peter to Jesus to consider himself. Are you following me? That Jesus, won't you consider yourself? You see, people will tell you to consider yourself. And can I tell you the truth? Most of these boys, a lot of them genuinely love you. Are you with me? They what? Genuinely love you. And some of them will be spiritual. Some of them will be Christians. Spiritual people. Are you with me? Are you with me? You see, on this matter of divine will, you can't say, I trust this person is so spiritual. That I can't give me a wrong counsel against God's will. Are you following me? Are you following me? What you must deal with is the matter of convenience. Because people, there are people that will love you and almost love you out of the will of God. And you'll find out who is behind it. Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. God forbid, be far from the Lord. This shall not be unto you. So, what, (laughs) can you hear me, my friends? What was the pathway that was ordained by God for Jesus, which was to lead him into glory? Are you following me? Which to Jesus is obviously not convenient. Are you following me? But is the pathway to glory. Is the pathway to what? Now, on the side of Jesus, it is not what? Convenient. But on the side of God, it is the pathway that will lead Jesus into the glory of God. Hmm? Now, see what Peter calls that way. If he says, God forbid, <clears throat> be it far, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. What is the perspective that Peter was painting about this thing? He was painting it as something evil. Are you following me now, my friends? He was doing what? Painting it as what? Something evil. That God forbid be far from thee. May it not happen to you. Something evil. Right? Perspective had begun to change. Are you following me? Are you with me? Praise Jesus. So here we have two perspectives. Hmm? The God perspective, the perspective of God, that this pathway leads to glory. Hmm? And the perspective of man, of Satan, that this pathway is evil. Are you following me? We now have the experience of the person that is to go that pathway. What is the experience of the person to go that pathway? Not convenient. Are you following me? Two perspectives, it leads to glory. Another perspective, it is evil. We now have an experience. Are you following me? Which is what? Not convenient. The experience of Jesus is an experience of what? Not convenient. Can you hear me? Now, between, can you hear me? Between the two perspectives, the perspective of God, can you hear me? And the perspective of man, of Peter, of Satan. Are you, are you following me? Whose perspective does Jesus' experience actually fit into? Don't forget, 
how do you explain his, his experience? How do you explain what he was experiencing? Not convenient. Hmm? What was man's perspective or Satan's perspective? Evil. What is God's perspective about what he was going through? Glory. His experience is his, what was the, his own experience? Not convenient. Between the perspective of Peter that said, Be it far from me, which is evil. He was in it as evil. Are you following me? And God's perspective, which is this leads to glory. Are you following me? Which of the two perspectives does the experience of Jesus, which is not convenient, which of it does it fit into? Talk to me. Which of it does it fit into? Man's perspective. Man's perspective. What he was going through was not convenient. Are you following me? Man calls it, this is not good. This is evil. This is not good for you. And what he could really experience was, ah, this is not fine. Are you following me? God says it's the path that leads to glory. If it leads to glory, I should be, there's no sync between what you are saying and what I'm going through. Are you following me? But what I'm going through and what Peter is saying, they look alike. Are you following me? But the only reason why what I'm going through looks like what Peter is saying, are you following me? It's because I've got to consider my convenience. Are you following me? If God is the only one I'm considering, are you following me? What Peter is saying would not make sense to me. If my focus is just on what God has said, on what he's saying, that means I'm not going to look at, I'm going to take myself completely out of the equation. Are you following me? Friends, if you are going to come into glory, you have to take yourself completely out of the equation. Are you following me? What Peter is saying, are you following me, would only make sense to you because you are in the equation. Are you following me? Because you are where? In the equation. Because yourself is where? In the equation. But when you eliminate yourself from the equation and focus only on God, that this is the path to glory, then what Peter is saying doesn't what? Make sense. It's not true. It's not valid. Are you following me? But it is valid for many of us. Are you following me? People's advice, people's opinion, people's acceptance of us. Are you following me? People showing us mercy, open doors in court as it were. Are you following me? It's valid for many of us. Are you following me? Because we are still in the equation. It makes sense to us. Are you following me? Are you with me? The pity of men, the acceptance, the embrace. Are you with me? Those what we call open doors. They make sense to us. Are you following me? Because we are what? In the equation. Ourself. We are still in the equation. Are you following me? When we leave the equation, are you following me? And focus on the Lord. Focus on God. That is all about God. Are you following me? Then what God says begins to make sense. Are you following me now, my friends? Do you know? Are you with me? Do you know if Jesus loved himself... If he loved his convenience, are you following me? Life of convenience. What Peter was doing looks like a blessing. Are you following me? What Peter was doing looks like what? Like a blessing. Like when to save him from death. From him. This looks like a blessing. Are you following my friends? Can I talk to you, my friend? Many blessings, are you following that you consider a blessing, are actually a curse. Are you following me? This looks like a blessing. Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. You're not going to suffer. You're not, uh-uh. He said, I'm going to suffer. I'm going to be rejected. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. All of that. Be it far from you. God forbid. This looks like a blessing. This looks like protecting the man from evil. Guys, better be careful of what you call open door. Are you following me? But if you look at it from divine perspective, from God perspective, this is a real cause. This is what? This is a real cause. Are you with me? This is what? Talk to me. This is what? This is a big cause. Why is it a cause? If he's saying, be it far from this, this shall not be on today. Don't forget, this is what will lead Jesus to glory. Are you with me now? Are you with me? What Jesus was to do, the path that was ordained for him by God in this world, are you following me? Is what will lead him into what? His glory. It is now that thing that Peter is saying, be it far from thee. May it not happen to you. Was it not causing Jesus? <clears throat> Are you following me now, my friend? 
Was he not cursing Jesus? He was invariably in the real. See, 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 see. Are you following me? See, even though Satan is the one bringing those doors, those people to help you and all of that, is one is the one in, in, in inciting them. Are you following me? You see it as a blessing, but in the spirit, they all know it's a curse on your destiny. Are you hearing me? They all know what is a curse on your destiny. Many people have 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 traveled out and it's a curse on their destiny. Many people have taken jobs, good paying jobs, and it's already a curse on their destiny. Because it's not the path that God has ordained for them. Are you following me? Many people are inside what they call blessing. Are you following me? What humans we call blessing. But Satan is laughing and is relaxed because he knows they are in a curse. Are you following? You think Satan does not know the end of this thing for Jesus? Are you with me now, my friends? Friends, are you with me? Satan knows the result of surrender. He knows it is glory. Because he knows why he lost glory. Rebellion. Are you with me now, my friends? So, in the natural eyes, hey, friends, are you with me? In the eyes of man, in man's calculation, this looks like a big blessing. This looks like what you will share testimony for. You will share testimony on Sunday morning. That God just blessed me. God just opened the door for me. Are you following me? And in this priest, they are looking at this guy. That wow, this guy just came under a big curse. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me? That this guy just came under what? A big curse. Because talk to me, my friend. You need to see how God sees. You need to see how they see in the spirit. And Satan knows it. Talk to me sincerely. Is this not a curse? No, I've, you, you didn't know it before. I've explained to you now. Is this not a curse? This is a curse. This is what should lead me into my glory. This is what should lead me into the all that God has in stock for me. And you are saying, be it far from me. You understand? And you are saying, may it not happen to me. Are you following me now, my friends? Can I talk to you? So, God says, come and walk this path. Are you following me? And this path is full of fire, full of storm, and a lot of things that will discourage you. Are you following me? But if you want to walk this path, I've shown you there's grace to walk this path. It's able to succor those that are tempted. Are you following me? And at the end of that path, are you following me? At the end of that path, you see many great things. Hmm? You see billions of dollars, you see mansions, you see a lot of great, great things. Are you following me? Are you following me? You know to someone that, you know the end. You, see, you know it, you can see it there. You just want to just cross. Just cross from here to here and go and start enjoying what you should enjoy. But the road is thorny. Hmm? Things there are not okay. You now begin to tell someone that. Now you don't tell the person. In fact, he said, and be raised again on the third day. Are you following me? But you don't tell the person the full picture. Are you following me? Because even yourself, you don't know the full extent of the glory. But you know it leads to glory. You only explain to them what God has asked you to do. You don't necessarily tell people the end because you yourself don't even really know the end. But this is what God has. This is where God has asked me to stay. This is what God has told me to do. You understand? That is that pathway. Are you following me? Someone now says, "You now tell somebody, ah, is God has said I should be here? Or is God has said I should stay here for now?" The person now say, "God forbid! May you not pass through this. May you not pass through this. May you not pass through this fire." May you not pass through this road, through this muddy road. God forbid. God forbid. May you not pass through this place. Person says, turn back, walk on a smooth road. Then there is there are some million naira, maybe like about ten million naira here, and one house and one car. Are you following me? But there are billions of dollars. There are a lot of great things there. Are you following? Me? Person says. God forbid me, you know, more. and you know that this, you can see that this road is rough. It says, turn back, see this good road. See, uh, you have some nice house, you have one house, nice, you have a good car, you have some amount, good amount. Are you following me? I bet I'll show you that one. I bet you'll say, God forbid, you will not pass here. 
May you not pass here. And you, you've seen what is there. What will you do to that person? What's the person doing to you? What will you say the person is doing to you? He's not doing well. Is the person cursing you? What's the person trying? No, the person, don't, don't forget why the person is saying, don't pass, don't pass. Because the road is rough. There are tons on the road. But you, you can see something else. Are you following me? Now, if you are going to interpret, that person wants to, thinks he's helping you. <laughs> are you following me? In light of what you can see, what you are going through. But the end of what you are going through, you can see it. Now, in the light, interpreting everything in the light of what you can see, that great glory, what is that person doing to you? He's trying to hinder you from coming into that thing you have seen. Are you following me? What will you do to, do, what will you do to that kind of person? If, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about spiritual now. If he's trying to hold you back from going, he's trying to pull you back. What will you do? What will you do? Tell me what. You will do what? <laughs> Tell me he's trying to pull. Hey, God forbid. God, God forbid. God forbid. Get, get. What will you do? What will you do? He will push the person and run through what? Through the bad road. Why? Because that. What? You will push the person because this person, you are, you are a wicked person. You are a, I, I, see, you are, I see everything they've said before. And I say, this small road. This. Oh, and don't forget our light afflictions. Can you hear me? Our what? Our light afflictions. Which are what? Are for but a moment. Our what? Our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, produce for us what? An eternal weight of glory. Are you following? Me? You push person because you are a bad person. You want to hinder me from glory. Now, why would you push the person? Because sit down. What you are seeing is important to you than the way that will lead to it. You are not considering your present inconvenience. The present inconvenience you must go through to get there. The person actually sincerely, don't forget, the person can't see that. Hmm? The person sincerely wants to help you. The person sincerely wants to bless you. Are you following me? Well, the person wants to curse you. <laughs> Are you following me? This is like saying, be it far from this that you will come into glory. So what should hold you now? As that, as that say, it shall not happen to you, you will not come into glory. Be it far from you, you will not enter glory. You will not enter your glory. You will not come into glory. Ah, Will you wait? <laughs> will you wait? You will not enter glory. Be it far from you. Be it far from you. This shall not happen to you. You shall not happen to you. you will not, may you not enter glory. <laughs> Guys, in the spirit, this was what Peter was doing to Jesus. He was cursing Jesus. That was how they interpreted it in the realms of the spirit. Are you following me? Are you following me? I know things happen in the spirit before they manifest in the, in the natural. Are you, are you with me? You see, if Jesus embraced what Peter said, he has said yes to Peter's cause. Are you following me now, my friends? You see, you think people are helping you. Are you following me? But in the spirit, are you following me? They interpret it as cause, a cause, a cause on your destiny, a cause on your life. That's why not every open door is open. <laughs> are you following me? Some door open and they've shut the door of your destiny. Are you with me now, my friends? You see, not every opportunity is from the Lord. You know something that you will attach God's name. You will share testimony. You see, when you see open doors, when you see opportunities, when you see what you call breakthrough, are you following me? Don't just look at it. Look at what is the source of this thing. And the way, the way you will know the source, whether it's from God or from man. Oh, from man. From Satan, from man. Are you with me? The way you would know, always 100%, is it, is it leading you closer to the will of God or farther from the will of God? I'm telling you the truth. Is it, is it in sync with what God has told you, with the path God has set you on? Is it helping you to stay where God has told you to stay? Is it leading you, is it strengthening you in the journey God has put you on? Or is weakening you and is making you turn back? Guys, 
if what is coming to you as an opportunity, as an open door, is weakening your resolve about the will of God, is, is turning you back, friends, I'm telling you 100%, it's not from God. No matter how big it is. So like, take it and come and share testimony in church. It's still not from God. Are you following me? That is the primary check on whatever you call an opportunity or an, or an open door. Check, is it in sync with what God has told you? Is it in sync with the will of God for you? With the path God has set you on? Is it in sync? Is it, is it, is it strengthening you more and more on the journey God has set you on? Is it leading you stronger and stronger in the will of God or is it leading you away? That is the check. You see, so in other words, are you with me? If Jesus embraced Peter's pity, are you following me? If Jesus embraced Peter's help, Peter's open door, he has shut himself off from the glory of God. Are you with me? He has what? He has shut himself off. He has shut himself out of God's glory. You see, and don't forget, why will he embrace Peter's help? Peter's pity. Peter's open door. The only reason is because what? He lost himself. He lost his convenience. Friends, 100% convenience will always shut you out of God's glory. When you love your convenience, when you love your comfort, when you love yourself, it will always 100% shut you out of divine glory. Because people will, people will legitimately come and help you not to to not be to not be inconvenienced <laughs> are you following me peter you don't want you to be inconvenienced are you with me why should you be inconvenienced young boy why, why should you be yeah, the opportunity why should you be inconvenienced i can help you are you with me you are better be careful those of you who love help are you with me are you following me now, my friend those of you who love open doors hmm Christianity is not about open doors. Are you following me? It's about the will of God. Are you with me? It's about what? And when you embrace the will of God, the doors that need to be opened will be opened. Nothing opens the doors for your life that God has declared, that God has ordained to be open than the will of God. Than embracing the will of God. Are you with me? This shall not be unto thee. What a cause. What a cost. Are you following me now, my friends? What a serious cost. Thank God Jesus did not love himself. He didn't love convenience. So, can you see how, how, how so many people have missed out of glory? Because they love what? Themselves. Because they love a life of convenience. They've missed out of God's glory. Because they choose themselves. They are the priority. Guys, in this world, you are not the priority. Can you say, I'm not the priority? God is the priority. Jesus is the priority. The will of God is the priority. You are not the priority. If Jesus made himself the priority, are you following me? He would embrace what Peter appeared to be presenting to him as an as help, as an open door. But he would be rejecting the glory of God. He would be missing out of glory. You see, when you love yourself, when you are the priority, are you following me? You will miss out of the glory God has ordained for you. Because the glory God has ordained for you can only be attained when you walk in the path that God has ordained for you. Are you following me? And when you love yourself, when you love your convenience, you will not walk that path. Are you with me now, my friends? This shall not be unto thee. This shall not be unto thee. Friends, are you really ready this evening? This shall not be unto thee. May your ears open, may your eyes open to see when men are cursing you, even when they are when they are actually in the natural blessing you. You know what I, you know what I just said to you. You need your ears and your hearts to be open. That when men naturally, logically, are you following me? How it appears to the eyes of man. Are you following me? When it's as if they are blessing you. Uh, 
When it's as if they are helping, when it's as if the open doors are open, opportunities are coming. Are you following me? But in the spirit, what they are seeing is a curse. A curse. A curse. I say, may your eyes open. May your ears open. Even though I've prayed for you, your eyes and your ears cannot open if you love yourself. <laughs> you follow me? If you love your convenience. Hmm? The way to keep your eyes and your ears open, open, always open, are you following me? Is to make God priority. Is to reject yourself. He says, no, I'm not the priority here. Are you following me? Huh? See, whenever these kind of counsels are, are coming to me, I've never been caught unaware because I've made my decision. This is Jesus first. It's not shocking to me. I'm not thinking about I'm not, see, no, no counsel that, that is against God's path for my life. None of it shook me. None of it, I didn't sit down to start thinking about any of them. That, ah, should I consider it? No, no, no. It didn't stress. It's not it's not hard for me to, to reject it from my heart. Are you following me? It's not hard. I don't, it's not stressful. I'm not praying to God that I'll be, maybe God has changed his mind that I don't know. I mean, maybe God is just using this thing to speak to me. I'm not, I'm not stressed. It's not hard. Why? I'm not the priority here. My convenience is not the priority. My comfort is not the priority. My ears are open. I know this is... Peter speaking. Satan Peter speaking through Peter. I hear him. I hear him. Some of you is hard to make decisions. You should be able to make decisions on the spot. I'm telling you the truth. Oh, Samuel, I just got a job for you right now in Canada. $15,000 per month. There's a house, there's a car with and all of that. You should be able to say on that spot whether you're taking it or not. Are you with me? You should be able to what? Say on that spot whether you are what taking it or not. I'm telling you the truth. Say, I'll go and think about it. I'll go and think. It. At that time, even God helps you, He reminds you of what He has told you. <laughs> Let me assume that God, God has told you that it's not yet Canada, it's still Obadore. It's not Canada, it's not, it's not even Kaduna, not to talk of Canada. It's Obadore here. He has told you, are clear. Are you following me? At that time, you know, when, when such offer comes, you can easily forget. God help you, he reminded you. Are you following me? You know some of you still saying you have to go and think about it. He said better to give you, give you some time. Just give me, at least even if it's just today, let's just give me one day. You're not serious. You know why? You have to go and go and think about it and count the losses and count. You have to, to go and see, you have to go and see if you can still manage it. You're not as serious about following this Jesus. Do you able to say yes or no on the spot? Are you following? The question is, what is your priority? Are you following? I can say, see, I've said yes or no on spots before on this spot. I can say, I, I conveniently say yes or no on the spot. How can I say yes or no on the, on the spot? Jesus is a priority. Are you following me? And I'm all out to do this and I, and I know what he has told me and I know what he's telling me part time. So, this thing I'm bringing to me, is he in sync with God's path for my life? Are you following me? It's not hard to know what you are saying. Uh, you are not speaking in tongues. What you are saying. Are you, for example, someone come and tell me to come and travel to Canada now. $50,000 per week. It's even per week, it's not per month. Are you following me? The Ferrari, everything is there. Are you following me? I come and travel now. Like, I will tell them the answer on the spot. I'm not going to think. The answer is no. I'm telling you the truth. Some of you are, are, are surprised you, because you jump at it. <laughs> it's not because I'm a pastor. I've been like, that for, been like this for many years. I love the Lord Jesus. I, his will is my command. It's my priority, not me. My answer is no. For you, it can be yes. Are you following me? At another time, it might change to yes for me. Are you following me? But right now, if such offer comes, my answer is what? No. It's not in sync with divine will. It's not hard for me to say no. I, I can easily say, I easily say no and I can easily say no. And I will easily say, it's not about what you are bringing. Are you following me? It's about what has he said, what he has said. It's about what I'm going to lose. Are you with me? Friends, some of you think about what you are going to gain too much. You have to think about what you are going to lose. Are you following me? Are you with me? 
You are thinking about what you are going to gain in terms of earthly things, material things. Have you thought about losing his glory? Have you thought about losing his pleasure? Have you thought is about what you are going to lose? Have you thought about losing his presence? Are you with me? Have you thought about losing his presence? Have you thought about losing the joy of your salvation, losing your inner peace? Have you thought of it? You know, some people are where they are and there's no peace in, on their inside. They don't have peace. They're just struggling with it. Very soon they will kill it. They will kill their conscience. Have you thought about what you will lose? Friends, be careful of what you call opportunities. Are you following me? Why did I say the, the litmus test is? Is it helping you stay in the will of God or is it taking you out of the will of God? That's why number one, you must even know what Lord we have you do. You must know his plan for your life. You must know what he's saying to you. Are you following now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Look at what Jesus Christ said. But he turned. Can you say, but he turned? Can you say, but he turned? All the time. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. But he turned. But what? He turned. But he turned. Are you following me? Guys, don't forget. Don't forget. It's because I'm showing you now that you know that what Peter was doing was evil. Hmm? It's because I'm showing that you know that you, are, you know that you know that what Peter was doing was that he was placing a curse on Jesus. It's because I'm showing you now. Are you following me? If you read this scripture, are you following me? Huh? This is naturally Peter trying to help Jesus. Are we right? Are you true? Naturally. Hmm? This is naturally Peter trying to what? Help Jesus. This is naturally open doors and open doors. This is naturally what you call a miracle, in quote. This is what you call naturally a breakthrough. Are you following me? The Bible says, but it turned. Guys, can you turn from open doors because you know that is not the will of God? Can you turn? Do you understand? Can you turn? Can you turn from what appears naturally? It's a blessing. You know, friends, oh. You know, naturally, forget now. Forget small. Just for this, this, this minute. Forget what I've told you. You know that naturally, this, what Peter was doing was a blessing. You know it's a blessing. Naturally. In the natural. Protecting him from sorry, protecting him from death. Protecting him from all of that. Huh? Do you understand? But in the spirit and in reality, what it really is, is a curse, right? But this is natural, in the natural, logically, human reasoning is a blessing. Hmm? The Bible says, but it turned. Many of us see opportunities. Many of us see what we call open doors. Many of us see what we call blessings. What do we do? We jump at them. Right? We do what? We jump at them. We jump at them. We jump at them. Why? Because the will of God is not important to us. You see, when God's will is not important to you, when the art of God is not not important to you, when you are the priority, are you following me? You will jump at every opportunity. Did you hear what I said? You will what? You will jump at every opportunity. People who have, can you hear me? People who have the audacity to turn. Can you say turn? You see, to turn is an audacity. <laughs> is that what? Is a serious audacity. Is a real audacity. What is obviously a blessing in natural? Come and take this job. Come and travel out. Come and do this. They're they are, they are, they are going to give you a car. Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, a blessing in natural. And those things, those blessings in natural that are coming, that will come to you if you embrace them. Are you following me? You don't have them yet. Can you hear me? You don't what? You don't have them yet. What they are offering you, you don't have them yet. And it's not necessarily sinful. Can you hear me? It's natural. You don't have them yet. To turn is real audacity. To turn is what? Real audacity. Because 
if I already have them, are you following me? It will be easy to turn. Are you following me? If I already have the money, if I already have the cars, if I already have the connection, the opportunities, when you are bringing them to me and I see that they are not part of God, they are not in line with God's will, are you following me? It will be easy to turn. Are you following me? But when I don't have them, are you with me? When I don't have them, when, I'm, when they are lacking in my life, are you following me? And I turn, that is real audacity. It is real audacity to turn. Are you with me now, my friends? Can I talk to you? A lot of the open doors or what you call blessings as it were that will be introduced to your life are you following me? In your journey on the path that God has set you on are you following me? Will be the things that you naturally lack. You will lack. There are things that you lack. Are you following me? So, there are things that you lack so that you can easily jump at them. You can easily embrace them. So, it's going to take real audacity for you to turn. Are you following me? It's going to take what? Audacity to turn. It's going to take real audacity for you to turn. Real audacity to turn. You see, and that audacity does not come because you are praying in tongues 24 hours every day. So when people pray in tongues, they still jump at opportunities that is not from the Lord. Are you following me? The audacity to turn from such opportunities comes from you having rejected yourself. Are you following me? The audacity to turn comes because you are no longer the priority. Are you following me? The audacity to turn comes because you have made Jesus the priority. Are you with me? Are you following? Because don't forget, these things that are coming now in forms of blessings, in cold, open doors, opportunities, are you following me? They are coming to address your need. Your need. But not necessarily the need of God. Are you with me? They are coming to address your need, but not necessarily what? The need of God. Are you with me? Are you following so, you have the audacity to turn because you are no longer the priority. Are you following me? And until we have Christians who are no longer the priority, are you following me? The kingdom of God cannot be established in this world. Are you following me? You see, Christians, we just jump at every kind of opportunity, every open door, because we are the priority. Are you following me? So Jesus, so clear, so sure about the path that God has ordained for him. And here is a sort, in quote, a sort of blessing coming, coming his way. An open door coming his way. An opportunity coming his way. Are you following me? But this Jesus, are you following me, did not mind to be inconvenienced. This Jesus did not mind to be uncomfortable. This Jesus has said to himself, I'm not the priority here. This Jesus has said that God is the priority here. So this Jesus had the audacity to turn from an open door. Are you following me? The reason why he had the audacity to turn was not because it was Jesus. Are you following me? He had the audacity to turn, are you following me? Because he had said, he had made a resolve that I'm not the priority here. He has made a resolve that God is the priority here. Are you following? You see, until you make Jesus the priority, what God thinks, if, until you make the will of God priority, are you following me? Every way will be a way for you. You're just looking for a way. Way. Just they shall run out by your honor. You're just looking for a way. Any way will be a way. You don't know where you are going. He turned. Friends, can you turn? Are you following? And don't forget, if you don't turn, are you with me? If you don't turn, you can't enter glory. Are you with me? Because if you don't turn, don't, are you with me? If you don't turn, you have chosen another path. Are you with me? A path that does not lead to glory. Are you with me now, my friends? He turned and said unto Peter, Are you with me? Get thee behind me, Satan. Friends, are you still with me? He turned and said to who? Get thee behind me. This is a serious matter. He turned and said to Get thee behind me, 
<laughs> he turned and said to Peter. He said to Peter, get it behind me, Satan. Hmm? He turned and said to Peter. So who he was speaking to was what? Was Peter. Peter had no what? Had not changed. Peter was still Peter. Are you following me? Get it behind me, Satan. Are you following me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. He turned and said to Peter. Let me explain what this he turned to you. Come and see you. This is it. He was speaking to the disciples. Oh, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer many things of the, of the priest and all of that. I'm going to die and all of that. Peter took him aside. Are you following me? Peter took him what? Aside. And began to rebuke him. He took him aside privately. After Peter said what he said, I love that word, but. But let's leave that. The Bible says, after Peter said everything, the Bible says, he turned. I said, get it behind me, Satan. He turned. He turned away from Peter. Are you following me? He turned to focus on the path that God has set for him. You appreciate that he turned the demonstration. He turned like he backed Peter and face. He continued to face the people he was speaking to. Are you with me? He could no longer see Peter. I'm going somewhere. Hmm? Peter was now. See, see, see. Get it behind me. This he turned. This get it behind me. Hmm? Is a literal explanation of that he turned. When he turned, Peter was literally behind him. Are you with me? Don't forget, he was talking to the Peter was here with the multitude, talking to them, to the disciples. Peter now took him aside. He turned and said, Get it behind. He was literally behind. You'll be appreciated. Go and sit down. Go and sit down. And said unto Peter, Get it behind me, Satan. Who, did he, who was he speaking to? Peter. Hmm? But he said, Get it behind. But what was he, who was he addressing? He was addressing Satan. But who was he speaking to? Peter, but he was addressing Satan. And what was, it, what was his position when he was having that conversation? He was backing him. Hmm? Are we ready? So he was speaking to Peter, but the address was to Satan. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Don't be deceived by Peter. Are you with, and I've told you that. Don't be deceived by who? Don't be deceived because it is Peter. Are we together? Don't what? Don't be deceived because it is Peter. And what will save you from this deception is either, whether you have rejected yourself or not. Are you following me? What will save you from this deception is if you are still the priority or God is now the priority. Are you following me? Because Peter is is waiting in the spirit. Are you following me? Peter was the among disciples he was the most respected. Are you with me? He was the what? See, this matter I'm discussing with you, you can't judge it by who is saying, who is trying to help you or not, who is trying to to advise you. You judge it by what your priority is. Are you following me? That what is my priority? Is it myself, my comfort, my convenience, or the will of God? Because in this matter, can you hear me? Because in this matter, Peter can speak to you. You know what I said to you? In this matter, on this matter, Peter can what? Can speak to you. Peter can open doors for you. Peter can give you an opportunity of escape, to escape all your troubles. Are you following me? But, are you hearing me now, my friend? But in the spirit, because we interpret everything from the realms of the spirit. In the natural, Peter is trying to bless you. But in the spirit, Satan is trying to place a curse on you. 
Are you hearing me? In the natural, Peter is trying to what? To bless you. But in the spirit, Satan is trying to what? To place a curse on, on you. Because Peter is a man, natural. Satan is a spirit, spiritual, supernatural. Are you with me? So in the natural, Peter is trying to what? To bless you, to help you. In the spirit, Satan is trying to what? To curse you. Are you with me now, my friends? Shout hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus said, get it behind me. He taught Peter, get it behind me, Satan, that I can see what is happening. Peter is the one trying to help me. My brother is the one trying to help me. My friend is the one trying to help me. This opportunity is from, from this, my beloved people and all of that. But I can see where this thing is leading. Are you following me? I can see where it is heading to. to. The resultant effect of this thing is that it's leading me away from the will of God. Are you with me? It is what? Leading me from the will of God and ultimately from the glory of God. Are you following me? This is not Peter trying to help me. This is Satan. Are you with me? You don't know what I just said. Did you get? Peter, my mentor. Are you following me? My husband, my wife, my friend. Are you with me, my friends? Are you, can you hear me? Someone who cares so much about me is trying to help me. He's trying to give me an opportunity. He's trying to give me an open door. Are you following me? But I'm a man that is not carried away by open doors. I'm not carried away by opportunities. So I checked that open door. I checked the opportunity and I, and I saw that this opportunity is a quiet deviation from the will of God, from divine will. Are you following me? So I quickly found out, ah, this is not just Agapita trying to help me. This is Satan trying to stop me. Are you following me? You know what Satan, I caught you. Are you following me? It was Satan wanting to stop Jesus from his destiny, now wanting to use Peter to help him. Hey, did you get that? Are you following me? Are you following me? Praise Jesus. Jesus was addressing this words to, to Satan. But he was speaking to Peter. He was saying, Satan, I caught you. Are you following me? This help that is coming is <laughs> not just my brother that is trying to help me. Satan is you. I can see you. I can see you. It's you. I, I, uh, Satan, I see you. I sight you. Are you following me? Are you with me? That this my fiance, this my fiance trying to take me to the abroad. <laughs> Are you following me? This guy trying to get this job for me. This guy giving me this opportunity. This opportunity, as I'm seeing it, is a deviation from the will of God. This is Satan. Are you following me? Can I give you a general principle? Anytime an opportunity is coming your way, an open door as it were is coming your way, a blessing as it were is coming your way, you can get water from there. Get water from that place. A blessing as it were, why you stand there? What is it? She can get it herself. I think she wants water. A blessing as it were coming your way. Are you with me, my friends? Are we still together? Anytime an open door as it were is coming your way, a blessing, an opportunity coming your way, are you following me? I want to give you a general rule. Huh? No matter who it is coming from, it's for her. No, 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 no. She was the one who signified. Or was that not what you were saying? I don't know what you were saying. You were doing like this. Praise Jesus forevermore. No matter where it is coming from, are you following me? As long as it is a deviation from divine will. Are you with me? Are you with me? As long as what? It's a deviation from divine will. You see, all of us know it when a door supposedly open. When we know it, our conscience tells us we know it. We, our spirit is alive. We know that this is not what God wants me to do. You know it. This is against God's will for my life. See, whenever such open doors comes, such opportunity comes, such blessings in court comes, and it is against God's will. It is against the path God has ordained for you. 
even if it's coming from Peter, no matter where it is coming from, whether Peter or Judas, can you hear me? Because we only reject, we only want to reject the one that's coming from Peter, from Judas. Because we know Judas is a betrayer. We want to reject Judas one. We want, but if it's Peter, we want to accept it. No, it's not because it's Peter. If only, no matter where it's coming from, as long as it is division from the will of God, from the path God has ordained for you, it is Satan trying to stop your, your journey into glory. Are you following? It is what? It is Satan trying to what? To stop your journey into glory. Is Satan trying to place a curse on you? Are you with me? Because Peter was not Satan. Hmm? But the help he was bringing, uh, are you following me? Would cause Jesus to deviate from the will of God. Are you following me? And, and Satan is anti the will of God. Anti God's will. Are you following? I'm telling you the truth. Anybody, Peter or Judas, born again, not born again, spiritual or not spiritual, are you with me? Pastor or not pastor, are you with me? Whoever is offering you something, an open door, an help, an opportunity, a blessing in court, that will cause a deviation from the path that God has set you, from the will of God. Are you following me? It is Satan trying to cause you. Are you with me? It is who? It is Satan trying to curse you. It is Satan trying to indict you from the glory of God. It is Satan trying to lure you away from the path of glory. Are, are you with me now, my friends? So Jesus Christ said, get deep behind me, Satan. Are you with me? Are you with me? This is serious, though. Get it behind me, Satan. Get it behind me, say, Just my back. Get it behind me. I don't want to see you. You see, don't forget, when Jesus was making this statement, he was saying Peter physically, he was addressing the spirit, the spirit of Satan. Hmm? Friends, can you hear me? I'm telling you, Satan can push men to help you. <laughs> Are you with me? Satan can what? Satan can move men to help you. Satan can move men to give you opportunity. Satan can move men to give you open doors. But all his aim is to place a curse on you. Are you following? His aim through those stuff is to make you deviate from the path of glory. His aim is to rob you of the glory of God. Are you following me? And the way you know it's Satan, are you with me? Is when whatever is being offered you is against the will of God, against God's path for your life. Are you with me? Are we ready now? So Jesus was talking to Peter physically. He said, Get it behind me. So Jesus was now backing Peter. Are you following me? You see, you need to, so you can, you, you know what Jesus was doing. This is a very, very important, these are serious principles. He put Peter behind him. So, all what Peter was saying to all the help that he was bringing to Jesus, were also what? Behind. Are you with me? If those things were natural things that could be touched, and Peter was holding them, they were now where? Behind Jesus. He could no longer see them. Are you following? Can I talk to you? You must know how to remove from your vision, from your sight, things, people, places, are you following me, that are hindrances, to the path that God has set for you. You must remove them from your sight. Are you following me? You must do what? Remove them from your sight. Can you hear me, my friends? You must what? Remove them from your sight. People, places, opportunity, things, whatever. You must learn to cast them behind you. So that, because you see, if, you, if they don't get behind you, you will take them home and start considering them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? You see, these kind of matters, don't try to engage it. If you engage it and you, on this matter, it will win you. That's the trick he used for Eve. It will win. Are you following me? This was supposed to be Eve's response. If Eve responded this way, she would have won. Get behind me. Are you following me? 
cast it behind you. Don't give it a thought. Take it away from your view. Are you following me? Make sure it has no place in your view. Otherwise, your vision of the heavenly glory will become blurry. Some of you put people around you, you put friends around you, you, put, you go to places, are you following me, that are contrary to the path God has ordained for you. You are now wondering why you are becoming weak in following the will of God. Are you following me, my friends? You know there are people you are with in your journey in life and your resolve to do what God has called you to do is strong. You understand what I'm saying to you? And you have a strong resolve. There, there's a company of men you keep. There are places you go to. There are places you go. There are things you do. There are people you are with that they just want, they, they, they energize you, they edify you. You just find that you are strong in doing what God has called you to do. How many of you understand what I'm trying to say? You find that you are strong in becoming what God says you should become. You find that you are energized in walking in the path of God. You follow me? Friends, I say stay in those companies. Can you say stay there? Stay there. Stay in those places. Stay. There are places, there are companies, there are people, there are atmospheres you stay that you, are, you find yourself in that you are, that by divine providence God brings you to. Are you with me? And you find that your resolve to become who God says you are, you find that it is strong. Your determination, your will, your desire to do what God says you should do. To walk in the path God says you should walk. You find that it is strong. You find that you find pleasure in just doing what God wants to do. They are those kind of people. Are you following me? But there's a company you will join yourself to. There's a company you will attach yourself to. There's a company you will, you will have alliance with. There are things you will do. There are places you begin to go that your resolve to serve God, to do the will of God becomes weakened. You follow my friends. You must learn to tell Satan to get it behind you. You must learn to cast those things away from your view. That's why you must not love acceptance. You must not love crowd. Don't love people. Don't, don't love too many people. Don't love crowd. Don't love to be accepted. If, what, what, what are you doing with people who are weakening your faith? Are you with me? I said, what are you doing with people who are weakening your faith? What are you doing with them? What are you doing in those places? What are you doing with them? What are you doing with them? You must have to cast them away from your view. Put them behind your back. You see, when I receive counsels, no matter who it's from, that is obviously against the will of God, the path of God for me. Are you with me? Are you with me? I don't consider that. I don't think... I'm, I don't spend time thinking about it and thinking of a hey, the prospect. I don't. I cast it behind me. Because hey, if you think about it, hey, if you spend time on it, if you spend time there, are you with me? And I'm also careful not to even call those kind of people. I, I'm careful. Some of them I don't have a choice there in my life. Are you with me? Are you are you following me? But I create space. I give space. Are you with me? I give space. Some I don't call. Some I don't. Are you following? Some once in a while. Some I don't even call. I don't reach out. Are you following? I don't go to places where that will weaken my resolve to follow God. I don't do things. I cast it behind me. Some of you don't know how to cast things behind you. Cast it behind you. Are you following me? Are you following me? And one of the ways to cast behind you is to now find companies, find the things, find the atmosphere that will empower you in doing the will of God. Are you following me? Are you with me? You must cast it. You know why Jesus Christ did this? Because his vision of the heavenly glory of the will of God must be clear. Are you with me? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. This one is telling me, okay, come and go get a job, blah, blah, blah. They're going to give you a house, can all of that. And it's that person I keep calling, I keep moving with every time. And even that person, no, 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 this is not what God will have me to. God will not have me travel. No, this is what God will have me to, blah, 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 blah. And I keep moving with the person, I keep calling the person, I keep spending time with the person. One day, what will happen? I'll go out of the will of God. I'll change my mind. Because as I, each time I spend time with the person, I'll think about him. When I, when I go back home, I'll think about that matter. When I'm with the person, I, I, just, I just love enjoying the person's company. See, don't enjoy companies of men that will put out your fire for God. 
You follow me? Your fire to follow divine will. Your fire to walk in the path of God. Your fire to do what God has called you to do. Don't walk in company in places as associated with things that will put out that fire. You follow me now, my friends? Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. Some of you, because you love, you love acceptance. You see that these people, this company, this association, these things are obviously going to lead me away from what God has called me to do. And you, you, you want to be there at all costs. Because you want them to accept you. You want to belong. What are you belonging to? Belonging is a cost. Don't know it's Satan. Are you following me? You must cast things, cast things behind you so your vision can be clear. You see, some pastors today, their vision, is, some, their vision about the call of God upon their life is no longer clear. Because they didn't learn to cast things behind them. Are you following me? They are moving with people who are putting pressure on them, who are telling them, ah, ah, you never, ah, hey, how many you be for your church? Ah, come, no, teach you. Ah, no, 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 no. Don't be waiting because they make a do with that. But you are still there with them. You are still your friend. You are moving. Moving with them. One day, you will do. Are you with me? So you must learn the principle of what casting behind you. What's the meaning? Take it out of your vision. Take it out of your sight. Take it out of your Can you, can you say take, take it out of your sight? You can, you can no longer see it. I can't see it again. Take it out from your sight. So your vision can be clear. Concerning what God has asked you to do. Cast it behind you. And set your focus. On what God has called you to do. See. The more you set your focus. On the will of God. On the path God has called you to walk in. Are you following me? You forget about it. It's, you forget. You can't remember. You don't. You don't you, you're not, it's not in your mind. Because your mind is not empty. You understand? You're just focused on what God has asked you to do. Jesus needed his focus to be clear here. Yeah. Are you with me? He needed what? His focus to be clear. He needed his vision to be clear. So he had to cast that open door behind him. Guys, if you don't learn to cast behind you, you'll soon lose sight of the heavenly vision. Are you following me? You soon what? Lose sight of the heavenly vision. If you don't learn how to cast behind you, cast the advices you will cast or advice you will cast behind you, opportunities you will cast behind you, people you will cast behind you, places you will cast behind you, things you will cast, cast it away, cast it behind you. Don't look at it, back it. I don't want to see you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Cut, cut off. I mean, cut off. It means cut off, cut off, cut off. Some have to cut off completely, even physically, in every way. Some people you have to just cut off from your heart. Are you following me? You have to cut off. You have to cast behind you. Are you with me now, my friends? Are you with me now, my friends? If you don't cast these things behind you, you soon lose sight of the vision God has put in your heart. Are you with me? So you see that it's Satan? Hmm? It's Satan. Get the enemy, Satan. I caught you, Satan. You have been discovered. You can't trick me. This is not my uncle trying to help me. Are you with me? This is not my friend trying to give me a job. This is Satan trying to what? Heal me out of the path of the will of God. Are you following me? So I caught you. Get the behind me. I cast you. I cast you out of my view. Are you following me? You will find out. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, the judgment of Jesus. Oh. Yeah, it's judgmental. Oh. Yeah, it's judgmental. Oh. Get the behind me, Satan. Thou art what? Thou art an offense to me. You do hear that? Thou art what? Thou art an offense to me. Guys, are you hearing these things? <laughs> Satan was arranging help for Jesus through Peter. Are you following me? But Peter, Jesus discovered Satan. And he called the help that Peter was bringing. He called it what it really was. He says it's an offense. You know the word, this offense, it's not like to offend someone. It's a trap. Are you following me? A what? A trap. You are trying to trap me. Are you with me? You are what? You are trying to what? 
to trap me. You are laying a trap for me. Are you following my friends? Peter was bringing a blessing as it were. Can you hear me? Peter was bringing an opportunity. Peter was bringing an open door. Are you following me? But in the real sense, Satan was setting a trap. (laughs) Can you hear me? In the real sense, Satan was what? Setting a trap. Using Peter as the bait. Using the open doors. Are you following? It was setting a trap. It was Satan setting a trap. Now, if Jesus was a lover of open doors, lover of opportunity, lover of himself, lover of his own comfort, are you following me? He would easily fall into what? The trap of Satan. (laughs) Are you following? You see, how to easily fall into, into the trap of Satan, are you following me? It's not that you ate in your dreams. It's not that they nailed something on, 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 your, on, your, on your window. It says that what? You are a lover of yourself. Are you with me? If you are a lover of yourself, you will what? Easily fall into what? The trap of Satan. Because the trap of Satan will not always appear as the trap of Satan. Are you with me? Did you hear me? For lovers of self, can you hear me, my friends? If you are a lover of yourself, if you prioritize yourself above the will of God, above God, you will always fall into what? The trap of Satan. Because the trap of Satan does not always appear as what? The trap of Satan. The trap of Satan always appears as the help of Peter. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You know why this can be so? Because Satan can be disguised, can be transformed into what? An angel of light. Hmm? Satan can be what? Transformed into an angel of light. So, the trap of Satan, are you following me? Can be disguised as the help of Peter. Are you with me? The trap of Satan can be disguised as the open door of Peter. The trap of Satan can be disguised as the opportunity of Peter. The trap of Satan can be disguised as the love that Peter has for Jesus. It can be disguised as the concern that Peter has for Jesus. Can you hear me, my friends? Can you hear me? But if you are not a lover of yourself, if you have prioritized God and his will, you will always decipher the trap of Satan, even when it comes as what? The help of Peter. Do you understand me now? <laughs> Did you hear what I said? If you are a man, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Are you sure you can hear me? If you have prioritized God and his will. See, don't be afraid that, hey, pastor, this thing you are, you are saying now. Hey, how will I now escape not falling into Satan's trap? How will I know whether it's God or not? I've been telling you and I'll still, I'm, I'm telling you. Don't be afraid. Don't try to check whether it is. You understand? Don't try to check the thing. Just hear me well. I've been telling you and I'll still tell you clearly. And I'll be telling you clearly. Can you hear me? Because some of you cannot be afraid. Hey, so some help can be Satan trying to trap me. God save me. How will I know? No. God save me. How will I now know? Which, how will I know which one to take now? <laughs> no, it's not, it's not for you it's not like that it's clear my sheep hear my voice are you following me? are you following me? hear me well it's clear if you are a man who has made Jesus God your priority you have made Jesus your priority are you following me? you have made the will of God your priority you yourself are no longer the priority are you following me, my friends? if you are that kind of man are you with me? You will always decipher. I said always. Can you say always? Not sometimes. Can you say always? You will always decipher the trap of Satan even when it comes forth as the help of Peter. Yes, you will always know. I said always, 100, 100, 100 percent. You will always know. Are you following me? You will always those who we always can you say always again say always 
Those who will always fall into the trap of Satan. Are you following me? Huh? Which always comes as. Are you following me? Which always in this contest, are you following me, comes as the help of Peter. Those who always fall into it are those who prioritize themselves. Do you understand me? There are those who prioritize what? Themselves. They prioritize their convenience. They prioritize their comfort. They prioritize a better life. They prioritize a greener pastor, greener pastors. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's why don't forget what I'm telling you about that you must not be afraid to die. We are still on that subject. Are you with me now, my friends? So when you prioritize yourself, you will always fall into what? The trap of Satan. And don't forget the aim of that trap is to what? Leave you away from what? The path of glory to ensure you don't attain to the glory of God. Hmm? So many times, it's not Peter trying to help you. It is what? Satan trying to trap you. You understand what I said? I said what? Many times, it is not what? It is not Peter trying to help you. It is Satan trying to what? To trap you. Are you following me? I said, don't be afraid. Because God too will send many helpers to you. God will what? Send many helpers to you. Are you following me? How do you recognize that this is an helper from God? He does not take you away from what? The will of God. <laughs> in no way, in no iota does it oppose or look or stand against or take away from the will of God. No, in no, in no sense, no single sense. Are you following me? I know that it doesn't take you away. It brings you closer to the will of God. Can you hear me? Uh, the help from God, because why does God help you? Why does he send help, help to you? You know that I can do his will. So that I can give him to glory. Are you following me? So the help of God under no circumstance, are you following me? Under no circumstance, no matter what, without any iota, does not try to lead you out of the will of God or oppose the will of God. Are you following me? The help of God solidifies your faith, your belief, your resolve in the will of God. The help of God moves you closer and deeper in the will of God. That's how you know the help is from God. That one is not a trap. It's not, it's not Satan's trap. So that's, that also can also come from Peter. <laughs> Are you following me? It can also come from who? From Peter. Are you with me now? Are you with me now, my friends? Praise Jesus for the moment. So as long as you have the resolve that God is first, that God is who? God is first. Are you following me? You would always see Satan trying to, I mean, you will see where Satan is trying to trap you. Even through Peter's help. Are you following me? And you will also know that this is God trying to help me through Peter. Are you following me? That this is what? God helping me through Peter. When Peter let out his boat for Jesus to preach, are you following me? It was not Satan's trap. It was God helping Jesus through Peter because he needed that platform. Can you hear me? So, So you see, the same person can be used by God to help you. Are you following me? And can be used by Satan to trap you. So you need to see. Hmm? And the real sight is what is your priority? Yourself or God? Let me find a good place to land. Thou art an offense unto me. I'll pick it up from here next week. Are we still together? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Okay, let me just stop at that one. I'll pick it up for for thou servant not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Next week. I follow my friend. So, for thou what? Thou as what? An offense unto you. You are a trap to me. You are what? You are a trap to me. So, why could Jesus take this kind of position? They were offering help to him. He was saying no, rejecting it. Why? Because he could see. Hmm? But you know, many of us even see that Satan trying to trap us, we still go. Because what is presenting is help. And we are self-conscious. We love ourselves. You know, some people don't know that what they'll do, we, we lead them to prison or that they will die, that they can die, that they can arrest them. 
Are you following? Those pushing drug, do you think do you think they don't know that they can be arrested? Eh? You think they don't know they can be arrested? They know they can be arrested, but make a economic You understand? Those doing a lot of stuff to make money to live fine life. You think they don't know that they can get caught? They know, but they don't care. He says it's, it's a matter of chance. I can it can work, I might not work. Nobody them will know. Are you with me? Some Christians know that this is a trap. Huh? Are you following me? It's a thing to know, it's a thing to now choose. Are you following me? Uh, if it is a trap, and if I enter the trap, I will shall be enjoying life. Because don't forget again, even though I've shown you it's a trap, don't forget to. Oh. Are you following me? In the spirit, you have entered a trap. But in natural words, you are enjoying. Do you understand? Are you getting me? Don't, don't lose me or don't lose. Me. Put all these things together. In the spirit, you have entered a trap. But in the, in the natural, you have received what? Help. You have received an open door. You have received an opportunity. You are enjoying, enjoying life. Are you with me? So some people know it's a trap. But because they love themselves, they're still going to it. Because they want to enjoy life. They want to enjoy the pleasure, the comfort. They hate the inconvenience. Guys, do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, the reason why Jesus Christ could take this kind of position was not just because he knew. Are you following me? It was because he had conquered himself. Are you with me? Jesus could take this kind of position. Why? He had conquered himself. He had no desire to please himself. All his desire was to do the will of God. Are you with me? It's not because he knew. Some of us know. You think people don't know the repercussion for some of their actions? You think they don't know? You think they don't know that they are no longer working with God? Are you following me? You think they don't know? They know. They know. Oh, you know, Satan told Jesus, he said, he showed him all the glory of God and the kingdom and all of that. He said, bow to me, worship me, and I'll give them to you. Are you following me? Are you with me? If Jesus had worshipped him, and received all what we had to give him. Are you following me? Did he not know? Did he not know that he has worshipped Satan? Won't he know? Won't he know that he has worshipped Satan or that he is worshiping Satan? He, he will know, right? But he'll be enjoying all the glory that Satan has given him. But he knows that he's now worshiping Satan. But he 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 would he he, he chose to to enjoy the the so-called blessing opportunity, even though he's now worshipping Satan. You, you know, some Christians know they are no longer working with Jesus. Hmm? They know they are not in the will of God. They know they are not pleasing to God. Are you following me? They know they are now in a trap. They are no longer on the path to glory. They are no longer on the path of God. But it doesn't matter to them. Why? Their self is still reigning. They've not conquered themselves. It's not for lack of knowledge. They've not, they didn't conquer themselves. Their self is reigning. Are you following me? Are you following me? They have the desire to please themselves. They don't have any desire to do the will of God. Are you following me? Praise Jesus for more. So Jesus could take this position. Are you with me? Because he had conquered himself. He had no desire to please himself. He just wanted to do the will of God. So you'll be able to take the right positions in life, not just, because, not, just, not just because you know the source, but because you have conquered yourself. Are you following me? You have made Jesus priority. You have said to yourself, I'm not the priority. Are you following me now, my friends? Praise Jesus forevermore. Friends, we must be loyal to Jesus. We must be loyal to Jesus. We must pledge our allegiance to him. That is how we can take accurate positions in this world. May Lord bless us in Jesus' name. I'll pick it up from here. For thou salvest not the things that be of God. I'll pick it up from here next week by the grace of God. May the Lord bless us.